Hello, Encore Performance here. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing a Pass Fist Immortal with Dante, except it's just Dante playing Pass Fist throughout the Dravidians campaign, which is part of the newish Indian DLC. As we can see, when he first starts for about a minute, there's this weird texture. I don't know why. Maybe he was still stuck in the Dark Ages until he got a town center. Eventually, it does sort itself out, though, so just bear with me for a short time. He's going to start with a couple of cavalry and some hero units and immediately run up as he has six minutes to undermine the enemy position. Instead, he's going to completely defeat them. After luring a couple of chakram throwers out of the way, he'll continue up northwards until he hears of an enemy elephant enclosure. So he sends up a single rider, just as mentioned by our general Arian, and manages to knock down the fence even while being pursued by enemy troops. Thankfully, the fence is very low HP. It's not a palisade wall or a stone wall. There it goes down, and the elephants are running amok. So the king raises the alarm. Beaten by their own animals of war is what our general has to say. Dante continues north until finally he will arrive at Blue's main economy. There's going to be a couple town centers here, but with his 1900, almost 2k ELO level micro, it's pretty easy for him to take out. And it crumbles. Thankfully, um, Blue is not building any units yet due to the fact that no triggers have gone off as the timer is not finished. So Blue won't really respond to this. Obviously, he'll put his villagers in the TC as we saw, but it's not a lot. So Dante gets the first town center, and he'll run up, here's another one. He's going to hit it once, trigger the villagers to go inside. They'll immediately aggro on that first light calf. So this is what Dante has to micro. Of course, while avoiding Blue's castle up on the hill. There, the texture fixes. Not sure why it was in the first place, it's just the way I received the recording. Dante, of course, was on a timer, so the timer goes off and he receives villagers, but he continues to attack the town center. Blue will now construct units and try to stop this. Thankfully, Dante's already got to knit to quite a low HP, and he's going to get it to go down. The villagers have already jumped out, so it's going to be an easy take as long as a bunch of elephants don't show up. And thankfully, for Dante's sake, they do not. This will now completely defeat the Chalukian army without even fighting them at all, which is rather amazing. Well, I mean, taking down their TC, but no troop-on-troop -troop battles. Dante will begin to boom, and as we can see, Blue will begin to delete stuff and eventually resign. He then receives word that Pink, in the very far east, also known as Venji, will attack wherever Dante signals using the flare. So this is going to be good for him. Due to this, Dante is going to build up his economy close to Pink. That way he can be defended by their troops due to the fact that, again, he's playing as a fast fist. He cannot kill units. We're going to see he's going to invest into a very large fishing economy, as I suppose the waters are safe. There we can see how Yellow comes to raid Dante. Thankfully, Pink's elephants are close at hand and they are going to wipe out this small raiding force, all with the use of a flare and no kills from Dante. Pink's even better going to construct a castle for Dante up on the hill, which with the high ground will cover the town center perfectly. Dante's new objective is to destroy four teal universities throughout the map, two up north and then two northwest. He's going to build a castle over in Pink City where it won't hit anyone, because of course there'd be a kill for him and continue to boom. Now we can see, using his siege elephants, he's going to push up towards Teal's universities. He'll send a smaller number to the first one outside the city walls. This is going to lure most of Teal's forces out towards it. Thankfully, Dante will have taken down this university before they even arrive. Dante will then break through a wall higher up to get the second one. There goes the first university. Dante is going to attempt to try and save these elephants by gaining them into a transport ship. Up at the top, his elephants do make it in. Unfortunately, there's just not quite enough of them and too little HP, so they will go down after getting the university to just about half HP. We can see Dante's now going to use petards and as well research his tech that will allow his elephant units to regain HP. He'll begin to trade with a yellow market remaining at the bottom of the map. This is how he's going to get his gold source for all those elephants and monks, and of course he'll continue to get food from fishing. He sends a small number of light cav up here. They're going to attack a mining camp. This will cause Teal to send the majority of his units out of his city, leaving them vulnerable to first Dante's petards, who will take out one of the four universities, then move on towards the town center. You can see Dante receives a small number of gold for destroying them as well. They'll grab Teal's town center and a nearby tower. Just It puts a use of them, that way they can't hurt anything else. He'll also begin to move up with a separate force while Pink arrives, a little bit late to the party, but the thought counts. He sends some elephants up to that 
first attempt that he made on the universities, gets that one down, and with just one left, he sends in even more siege elephants, you guessed it, still no kills, and manages to stream through the walls enough numbers that they will as well get this university, causing Dante to be victorious with no kills. Tio has a little fit with his announcements, talks bad. Thankfully for us, he can't do much now that he's resigned, except delete his buildings, of course. Dante's elephants gather in the center as Teal finally puts in the GG and resigns. Victory is ours, our general notifies us, even though we're already quite aware. We sit and wait until eventually the You Are Victorious page arrives. Dante quickly hops over to the statistics to make sure he's all good. But yes, 260 units lost. Terrible to see from an immortal's view such as myself. Thankfully, zero units killed, and that's all that matters for him. So now he'll move on towards the second mission of this five mission campaign. Unlike the first mission, the second mission will in fact begin on water, where Dante will be in a battle. Thankfully, he can sit back and let Green and the towers do most of the work. He'll head off, lure away some orange navy. Of course, what he's supposed to do is defeat some rebels at the city I'm showing you on screen. Just outside of it, they'll attack you as soon as you exit. This will begin the triggers and the scenario, causing everyone to begin producing units. Dante, however, d does not feel like this is the right way to do it. So he'll sail to the south, again, lure away a couple more units, until finally it'll be clear for his siege elephants to enter the play. They begin to assault the gate of the treacherous king, that we, however, have not found out is treacherous yet. Dante's just got a anticipation, and he's right, all right. So he'll knock down that gate, destroy a tower, and push onwards. Then he'll send in a unit, which will again lure more units outside of this starting compound. If his unit runs up to the top, far enough away from the castle and hops into the transport, these units will no longer be aggroed, and far enough away that they can't be aggroed again. So Dante grabs the last three, and heads back up to the transport. With all of them lured away, he now sends in his siege elephants. These destroy the castle with ease, and as we can see, out pops the king from the rubble. Dante will stab him a little bit, just to punish him for his treachery already and continue with the rest of the scenario. However, instead of once again going for the waves of rebels, Dante will lure away more purple units, emptying their city. He'll get Castle Age after destroying their town center and castle with more siege elephants. Then take his entire army, or what remains of it, and lure yellow troops, along with the bandits outside the settlement, which would be blue, up into Green's towers, where Green can kill them, as Dante is unable to do so. Then send the same three siege elephants in for Yellow's Towers, as these are a later objective. He'll destroy also the town center to start with. Yellow will immediately resign after the rebels are defeated. Then all that's left for Dante to do is to take out the towers. He does just this, and after they go down, Dante had already wounded the scout enough that the scenario was finally over for Dante. He just had to sit back and wait for the statistics to arrive. Again, a pretty crazy way for him to play it evading all the triggers and everything, a bit sneaky, but it definitely worked for him. Well, Rajendra trash talks the treacherous king, Dante checks his statistics page, and of course, zero units killed with only 44 units lost. Not bad from an immortal's point of view, but of course it could always be better. He now jumps into the third mission, where he'll have to pick up a chariot. Said chariot and accompanying units will then be embarked on one of Dante's transports, which will then head over to Rajendra by the other route. Of course, along the way he'll be attacked by many ships, some from Sri Lanka and some of the Bengali pirates. Dante though will just lure them away with his ships without destroying any of course and head off towards his final destination. He needs to stay on the lighter water otherwise his ship will take damage. Thankfully it's not too much for him to be concerned of. He'll land his units and rush them over to Rajendra. After docking and granting the chariot to Rajendra, which is now gone. <laughs> he'll receive a town center, some villagers, and some production buildings. He'll quickly rush over to one of Yellow's castles with some siege elephants before Yellow's constructed too many units. He will then destroy said castle. Yellow will ally him. This will cause Dante to have gained four of the ten prestige he needs to earn. Now five, as he builds 40 warships. Of course, how these tr prestige work is he needs to get a certain amount of something or complete some quests. Some of them, though, can be reversed. Say he needs to maintain 40 warships. If he loses 10 of them, it's no longer going to count as a prestige farm. Thankfully, he can just build 10 more back and fix it. He'll be attacked pretty hard from the north, as he maintains an alliance with blue. 
He's also going to begin trading with blue a bunch. We'll see that with his trade cart numbers rising. So you can see them being constructed in the top left. It's also one of his prestige quests. Eventually, yellow is going to betray him. So due to this, Dante deletes all of yellow's buildings now. So when yellow finally does claim his independence, he has no production buildings, no TC, and will just straight up resign, which again earns another prestige for Dante, putting him at eight already. This is pretty clever of him. We'll see he's got his whole fleet, the 40 out of 40 warships, and he's now at nine out of 10 prestige. All he needs to do is lure some Bengali pirates over into his side of the map where blue's castles are. Blue, however, has green as an enemy, so he can get the kills for Dante. After green is defeated, all Dante needs to do is build some trade cards, then earn the 10 out of 10 prestige, finally completing the scenario. So we can see, again, a bit more chatter before finally <laughs> we can see Dante still fighting some blue ships. Until finally, any moment now, the statistics page is going to come up. Dante immediately rushes, checks, yep, zero units killed, once again completed as a pacifist. Really impressive. In this fourth mission, he's going to have to first provoke Green to lure some units away from the city. Then he'll capture some old trebuchets, which have a couple shots in them. Unfortunately, they will take damage while in use, so Dante really has to make the best of them. He'll lure more green units away and bring up the trebuchets. They will get the castle down to low enough HP. Then, I'm not sure why, perhaps just the castle HP being low enough, green joins him. And Dante will rendezvous with General Arian, once again our buddy from Mission 1. We'll get a large number of troops and some orders about how we have to fight yellow. There'll be a timer, however, so we have to act fast. Or, well, Dante has to act fast. This is all Dante. I'm just a caster. Dante will move his units further up. Has, still has some at the back though, I'm not quite sure why. His main army is going to consist of some siege elephants, which he'll send straight up for that top castle. They're going to quickly take it out. And then we can see he's got some trebuchets to get out the rest of the castles. That's one of the three already defeated. Then with the elephants and the trebuchets help, he'll defeat the second one. All the yellow units that had been lured to the top of his base come pouring out. Thankfully, Dante gets the last castle. And once again, there's not much for him to do except sit back and wait for Yellow to resign. An extremely quick scenario for him, but once again, done as a pacifist with zero units killed. Really impressive from him again. He starts the last mission, in which he has many objectives. First though, he must capture a Sirijin castle by damaging it to 1000 HP. But of course, instead of going for one of the typical ones, he'll arrive over at Suvumaran, who you might remember from the Kamar campaign, who will ask him to please defeat Orange. So that's what Dante's going to do. He'll lure some units away with light cap, move in the siege elephants, begin to attack the castle. After getting it low enough, it comes crumbling down. Now, Dante has Teal as an ally, as Teal had been previously occupied with Orange, and Dante gets his castle. He near immediately moves on to the next one, using trebuchets from his newly captured castle. This will put him at two of the six. He'll ally blue, that way the castle won't get any kills, of course, on the enemy. This is going to mean green and teal. His allies are going to have to do all the work. Green is a navy, so they'll purely consist of ships who will regularly spawn in on the edge of the map. And they'll also grant him resources whenever one of his castles is lost. Speaking of castles being lost, blue's about to lose another one to some after this, he'll sail away dramatically, turning blue to ally once more, that way the castle won't hurt anyone. This puts him at half the castles already. So this is going so easy for Dante. Things are amazing. What could go wrong? Unfortunately, that'd be pink. However, Dante can lure most of his ships into Teal's castles and towers, repairing them and filling them with villagers at the same time. Meaning this will work pretty good. He'll now get the fourth castle with his cannon galleons down to the bottom of the map. The problem is, is blue units keep attacking these other ones up at the top, and there's no way for Dante to really defend them, along with this bomb one here, you can see all the karambits attacking it. So it will go down, Dante can capture it back later though if he needs. On top of these castles, there is also villages that must be liberated, and you'll have to control them once they're liberated. So he liberates one now quickly, however, after some blue spearmen take it away from him, it's now gone. So what he'll do is he will actually just raise the village buildings themselves, this just causes them to be eliminated from the game, meaning no one can control them and get resources from them. He also finds this little sanctuary at the top of the map with some resources. 
you know, build some docks here as this is going to be part of his production, as well as a mining cap to collect this stone and gold. As mentioned previously, purple is going to be a thorn in his side, taking one of his castles, leaving him on just one remaining, so he definitely can't lose that one. He will then continue to boom with some villagers while he tries to get Teal and Green to deal with this massive army. Teal is going to send Battle Elephants and Two-Handed Swordsmen, not a great choice, but hopefully they'll work. We can see Dante is going crazy on the wood lines, almost a Conan one there, but it's not quite. He's also going to build more docks for ships as his other ones were destroyed. He still has the ones at the top of the map though. Green has built a crazy navy, so Dante is going to be directing it around. On top of the fact that he has Teal there. Speaking of which, when allies defeat a castle, it automatically goes to Dante, so we can see Teal here has rammed down one of Blue's, granting it to Dante, which is good news for him. He gets some resources for this from Green as well, so we can see Green is taking out one of the villages here, not to control it, but just in fact destroy it, because it's guerrilla warfare and scorch earth tactics. If we can't have the village, Blue can't have it, so that's exactly what's going through Green's mind as he takes it out. Dante builds a very large fleet of cannon galleons, very pricey as well, which he'll be sending over towards Purple, who's definitely causing some problems at home, not only for Dante, but Teal as well. Thankfully, Teal does still have a castle and a tower remaining, however, he's lost his fortified tower. Dante's cannon galleons being cut down, already 16 from the starting 21, will rush in, they'll get some hits off on Purple's castle, not enough to have destroyed it. Thankfully, there are enough to put it down to 1000 HP, which is all that's needed. With this, Purple now resigns and is defeated, and Dante will gain control of the settlement, along with all the units, so he quickly has to ally everyone there in order not to get any kills. But now that Sirvujada is out, it's very good for Dante because he only has one enemy attacking him, and it makes it a lot easier for his allies too. So you can see, these are the purple navies I mentioned that will spawn in, pretty big, lots of thrust die, cannon galleons, fire galleys, and normal galleons. So we can see Dante's got a crazy trade route going on here, over a stack of trade carts just going back and forth. They're going in groups though, so it can't be very efficient. Blue, for some reason, is not attacking them, just sailing right by. I guess everyone's below deck sleeping or partying. Well, all goes on with trade, it seems rather peaceful. However, we can think of Green as Anakin and these villages as the younglings. So we can see he <laughs> moves on to destroy another neutral settlement. Once again, stealing it away from Blue. Now only three remain, meaning Blue's getting way less resources. As mentioned at the start, if we take out these villages, then it halts Blue's production by a percent. And should they all be removed, Blue's barely going to build any units. Dante himself has even joined in on the attacking of innocent villages as he destroys one. He'll now, we can see it's a bit of a tug of war between Blue and Dante as they fight back and forth for castles. Thankfully, Dante steals another one back, putting him at three out of six. When he eventually wants to take all six, he'll have to do many attacks at once due to the fact that not long after he captures one, it'll immediately be taken back. We'll see he gets one that he's never taken before over in the center, which is pretty well defended, so it's going to be a good position for him. Blue attempts to raid the crazy swarms of Dante's trade. However, it doesn't go too good for him. I mean, sure, he'll take a one red trade card for every three Dante builds back. Green chimes in, taking out another one of Blue's castles. Then Teal unfortunately lose it, which isn't great, but Dante will send a navy Another back up to immediately to recapture it after capturing this lower one down here. This means Dante is the closest he's been all game. He will have to move quickly though if he wants to win, and that's exactly what he does. So you can see, he strikes out, grabbing another one. Well, mostly green, but he's got a cannon guy here too helping, Dante does. Then, that's all six, just like that. And I know the counting's a little weird, it says 5 out of 6 in the top right, but it Your is Highness. 6 for Dante. I guess no, it's just because no. the fact Green captured it. Blue resigns, Dante gets an achievement in the bottom right, surrender. and Another. just like that, Dante's won. <laughs> He's done it with a crazy amount lost, crazy kills from his allies, but zero kills for him. This is a very impressive pass for foreign. I was honored he asked me to cast it, and I hope all of you guys liked it as well. My Discord's in the bio if you want. Have a good day.